I'm Kaylee, and today I'm going to be tier ranking all of Dickens' novels and some novellas and a few short stories. A lot of you have been asking for me to do a ranking of Dickens' novels, especially since I finished reading all of Dickens last year. Uh, so finally, this is going to happen. I have my computer all ready to go, and we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> I'm actually kind of weirdly nervous <laughs> because there's so much in Dickens that so many people love, and so, like, what if I, I don't know, what if I mess up? What if, what if everybody hates me? <laughs> but please keep in mind that this is just my personal experience with these books. I'm going to be ranking everything that I have read from Dickens, not just his main novels. So I actually have 25, oh, that's a lot. I have 25 books and novellas and short stories that we are going to be tier ranking. That is 15 novels, five novellas, and five short stories. The tiers are genius, forever favorite, enjoyable, Eh, okay, and forever hatred. <laughs> now you guys know I love Dickens, so there's not going to be much in the forever hatred tier. Unfortunately, our very first one is actually Barnaby Rudge, <laughs> which is probably the only one that's going to be in the forever hatred tier. Um, Barnaby Rudge, man. I think I gave this one two stars. I just did not like a single character in the entire book. It's all about these riots that are happening in, in London and either the riots are really boring or just really disturbing. The characters are poorly developed. It's just forever hatred. The next one is a short story called The Battle of Life. I really liked this one. I like how it balances kind of serious and silly subject material and it has a surprise ending. I'm gonna put it in enjoyable. And then we have the amazing, the delicious, the fantastic Bleak House. Oh my goodness, five stars forever. Um, is it forever favorite or is it genius? Mm, it's genius. <laughs> Bleak House has some truly delightful characters. It has a wonderful mystery. There are so many just exciting twists and turns in the plot. It is such a satisfying story on so many levels. It's genius. Then we have A Christmas Carol. I don't think I gave this one five stars. I think it was more like a four star read for me. I mean, it is wonderful. It is imaginative. There's bold writing, a very compelling emotional story. However, the ghosts freak me out. So that makes it not a forever favorite, but just enjoyable. I can't remember if Cricket on the Hearth is a novella or just a short story. I wanna say it's a novella. I do love Cricket on the Hearth. I think it's probably my favorite of all of Dickens's Christmas stories. It's hilariously funny and witty and it's just delightful. I'm gonna put it in enjoyable. Actually, I'm gonna put it like at the top of enjoyable. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna put Christmas Carol before Battle of Life. There we go, much better. Okay, our next one is David Copperfield, which when people ask me, what's your favorite Dickens? I always say David Copperfield. I love it through and through. I love everything in this book. Everything that I love about Dickens writing is in this book. Compelling characters, funny characters, really complex subplots, the way the whole story weaves in and out in this beautiful tapestry is of course genius. Actually, I'm gonna put it even before Bleak House. Come on, move over. Okay, there we go. David Copperfield is always, always at the top of any Dickens list for me. And our next one is Dombey and Son. This one features a touching sibling relationship that is so beautiful to read about. It's just such a gripping story of bitterness and love. It's beautiful. It's a forever favorite. Ah, Dombey and Son. It's wonderful. Then we have The Mystery of Edwin Drood. This one was never finished because Dickens passed away before he could finish writing it. It has really vibrant characters and a tantalizing mystery with, of course, all these loose ends. So, 
You just don't know what Dickens was gonna do with it. It is a powerful story. I'm gonna put it in enjoyable. If only it had been finished, I think it had the potential to be a forever favorite, but alas and alack, it was never finished. Okay, then we have a short story called George Silverman's Explanation. It's an interesting little story um, about a guy who's just kind of misunderstood and he tries to explain, <laughs> but it has kind of a badly organized plot. It's too short to have a satisfactory ending. I think I gave it like three stars. It's just okay. And the next one is The Goblins Who Stole a Sexton. This is another Christmas story about a grave digger, a sexton, who is kidnapped by goblins. It's very short. It's only like a few pages. And it just, it could have been further developed. It's not a very satisfying story. I think I gave it like three stars. It's gonna go in with the okay tier. Aha, now we have Great Expectations. This one is so divisive. So many people love Great Expectations. They say it's their favorite Dickens. I have never understood that because I never have enjoyed it. I never liked or understood any of the characters. I just couldn't figure out their motivations. What do they want? And every relationship between the characters seems to be really awkward and strange. I just, I think I probably gave it like three stars. I'm gonna put it on the lower end of enjoyable or maybe the upper end of okay. I'm gonna put it on the lower end of enjoyable. Okay, that's where, it, that's where it's gonna go. Then we have hard times. Um, this is another one where <laughs> I was just frustrated with the stupid characters. I didn't like any of them. I, I was intrigued by one character. Um, Louisa is kind of mysterious and she's an enigma, you know, but the plot isn't really that interesting. Hard Times is just, mm, it's okay. It's not the best. Next, we have a short story, The Haunted Man. And um, this is kind of similar to A Christmas Carol where a ghost appears to a man to urge him to learn a moral lesson and be a better person, and he makes drastic changes in his life. It has excellent characters and a really good story structure, but it has such a slow pacing um, that it feels boring because it just moves so slowly. So I'm going to put Haunted Man in the okay tier. Just meh. Another short story is a holiday romance in four parts. This is a cute little story told by these imaginative children, but it has no story structure at all. It's just these flights of fancy that these children are writing down. It's kind of, it's just nothing special. I'm just gonna put it in okay. It's fine, but it's not anything special, so. Okay, then we have another short story, Hunted Down. This is a chilling mystery with a very long buildup but then a really plain ending. It's like he takes us on this journey and there's such a huge buildup of suspense. And then it's like, what? That was the end? That was it? So that one's just okay. It could have been better. Ah, then we have Little Dorrit. Ah. <laughs> Little Dorrit is just such a wonderful story and such sweet characters. And I wasn't super impressed with the ending. The ending was kind of too far-fetched and the ending just kind of came too easily. Too many coincidences in the end. But the meat of the story is so fantastic. I just, I love Little Dorrit and I love how real the characters feel. So this one is a forever favorite. Even though the ending wasn't like quite what I wanted or quite as, I don't know, quite as amazing as it could have been. I still love it. Then we have Martin Chuzzlewit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Martin Chuzzlewit has such a complex story. There's so many different things that are happening, but one of the best things is young Martin has the most amazing character development I think I have ever seen in any book ever. I hated him in the beginning and I was so frustrated with his stupid indolent character and then gradually gradually he begins to make these changes in his life and changes in his perspective and his attitude and just the way that he grows in this journey I mean and by the end of course 
I absolutely love Young Martin. So this is a forever favorite. This is actually going to go right at the top. Wait. Dump. Yeah. No, right at the top of the forever favorites. <laughs> then we have another little short story called Master Humphrey's Clock. This is actually a collection of short stories and anecdotes, but all these separate short stories don't really have any connection to one another. And a lot of them don't really have a satisfactory ending. There's just all these loose ends and you never really find out what happened in the end. There is some good writing in there, but it's just poorly structured. So it's just gonna go in okay. Then we have Nicholas Nickleby. This is just silly sometimes and fun and wild, but also it can be really heartbreaking and sad in places. It's a very emotional story, but it'll also just really make you laugh. I don't know if I can really say that it's a forever favorite though. I'm gonna put it at the top end of enjoyable. I mean, it is wonderful, but I don't know that I'm just over the moon in love with Nicholas Nickleby. Maybe if I reread it, maybe that's one that I kind of need to reread and revisit that story. And then I feel like it would end up being a forever favorite. But right now, my memory of the last time I read it, which was years and years ago, it's just, eh, it was enjoyable, it was fine, but I don't have strong memories of it. Speaking of strong memories, here's ye old curiosity shop. This one I have very strong memories about. <laughs> this book is sometimes so horrifying and sad and then marvelously happy. There are such incredible characters and a really surprising plot. This has one of the creepiest, worst villains in all of Dickens. Um, I have to put this in forever favorite. Ah, no, get down. Okay, there we go, forever favorite. <laughs> then we have Oliver Twist. This is another one where people tend to either love it or they really hate it. And I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. I can see why people love it. And the couple of times that I've read it, um, I've really enjoyed it. I think it's gonna go in enjoyable. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. Then we have our mutual friend. Oh, this one is so wonderful. <laughs> There are complex characters, a beautiful romance, dozens of subplots, of course. Um, our mutual friend is definitely a forever favorite, but is it genius? <laughs> there are a lot of genius elements in it, that is for sure. Oh goodness, where am I gonna put it? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna put it before a uh, little Dorrit, but after Dombey and Son? No, I'm gonna put it in front of Dombey and Son. Yes, okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, that, that looks good, all right. Then we have the Pickwick Papers. I have not read Pickwick in a long, long while. I don't think I've read Pickwick since college. <laughs> Pickwick is hilarious from start to finish and they eat so much good food. So if you read Pickwick, always have a snack handy because you will get hungry. You absolutely will. I'm gonna put this right after Oliver Twist. No, no, go after Oliver Twist. There we go, okay. Um, yeah, enjoyable, lots of fun, just silly and hilarious, but not a lot of meat in there, I think. Speaking of a novel with a lot of meat on it, a Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> Whereas Pickwick is just all froth and frivolity, um, Tale of Two Cities is all seriousness. <laughs> this one is always five stars. It is heart-wrenchingly beautiful. I've always found it really inspiring. There's so many good characters. There's such an adventurous plot. Oh, I, I, I almost want to put it in genius. I think... I have to put it up with genius. It's, yeah, it's genius. It is. <laughs> and our very last one is a short story called The Chimes. This is similar to A Christmas Carol because a person learns to live with compassion instead of hatred. There are really colorful characters. There's a lot of sarcasm, but I mean, it's not my favorite. Nothing in this one really grabs my attention, you know? I think I'm gonna put it on the upper level of okay. It's fine, it's good. I mean, I'm glad I read it. 
it was enjoyable, but it's kind of more the lower tier of enjoyable, I guess. <laughs> so there we have it. A lot of stuff in the middle, three genius ones, one forever hatred. That is my ranking of all of Dickens, or all of Dickens that I have read anyway. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some of your favorite or least favorite Dickens novels or short stories. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.